Hi guys, so welcome to the second day of this training. All right, so yesterday we talked about a lot of stuffs, right? And um, we went a bit deep. We talked about um, the concepts of buy low and sell high. We talked about market structure basics, you know, kind of trends and all of that. So please, if you haven't watched the previous video, do what to watch that video because i'm going to be building on what i already established yesterday so i'm not going to be starting all over again today so welcome to the channel if you're just um joining us for the first time i urge you to click the subscribe button because we're having a 30 days training so when you click the subscribe button you'll be able to be notified whenever we have the next teaching also turn on your notification bell so that you know when a video comes up, you will know, right? It's a 30 days training. And of course, like this video and you know, share with your friends so that you can reach more people, right? So yesterday we talked about some protected highs and protected lows. So just because I'm st I still want to talk about that, we're still going to you know establish some things about that. So I say that the protected high is a high that has a liquidity grab. And then the break of structure to the downside, right? Don't worry, I will explain break of structure today. So just see this way that a liquidity, a, a protected um high is a high that is above a previous high. That means that's a kind of liquidity run. So I told you guys that yesterday, please watch yesterday videos. Yesterday, I said that liquidity grab for to for yesterday or for this but for this part of the training. This is the second training, right? So when we talk about liquidity for this part of the trading, right, we mean previous high and lows, right? This is not the only definition of liquidity, right? Note, this is not the only definition of liquidity, right? I am not saying that this is only what liquidity is. I am saying that because of today's training, because of today's teaching, right, I am, I am defining liquidity as previous highs, and previous lows that is only way i'm defining it just because of today all right so now we want to see price number one give us that take our liquidity and then number one this is what we used to establish a protected high so if another high must you know it must see number one you must see that liquidity grab right so you want to see price take out the previous high and you want to see what price make a new low all right these are the two things that makes up um a protected high right that means if there's no liquidity grab, it's not a protected high. If it does not, if there's liquidity grab and it fails to make a new low, that means it fails to break below this low. Maybe you see price, price starts coming back, right? This is not a protected high, right? I'll tell you guys the importance of protected high very soon. So that is basically what you're looking at for, right? Therefore, a protected low, or if some call it a range low, so you can also call it a range low. So for a protected low or range low, or range low. So that is the same thing as this. So you can call it protected high or range high, right? So for your protected low or range low, we want to see the same thing. So you want to see liquidity grab, which is what they take out of the previous time. Also, you want to see what, you want to see what make, what the price make a new high, right? So these are the two things that you must see before you classify a protected or range low, right? This can also be protected or range high, right? So you guys can understand that. Let me just, Quickly said that so I think I can see. It. All right. So guys, so so these are the things I want to see. So for the for the for the bullish example, so price is maybe bullish, and then you see price take a liquidity and then makes a new high, right? So this take out of liquidity is what to refer to as what our range low, our liquidity grab, sorry. So we see our liquidity grab down here, right? And then we'll see what price will make a new high. And of course, you want to see price close above it, right? So always pay attention to. So sometimes price doesn't close, but it close is very preferable. You want to see price close above or below. You want to see price close. Like you want to see price close above it on the candle basis. You want to see, you want to see price close below this low. You want to see price close above this high. Now, for the liquidity grab, now note something. Like it's getting very interesting. Now, for this liquidity grab, right, price doesn't necessarily need to close above. Not this. When we are looking at liquidity grab, 
price doesn't have to close above this before you call it a liquidity grab, right? It doesn't necessarily have to do that. But the close is very necessary here to confirm I made a new low, right? So what the see price close below this, right? So the close below this is more is very um we want to see that, but price doesn't need to do this. So you can see a week. So price can just weak above the high. That is a good signal for you, right? So the difference between what we're looking for in this is that in the liquidity grab, price doesn't need to close um doesn't need to close above this take out of the, doesn't it doesn't need to close above this, but in this low it has to close below the low, right? Let me just add this. Right, so let's add that too. So what the C buy is making you and close below, right? Then and close above. So you guys understand this better. So for the sake of the, the close for the new high, what the C price close above it for the new low, what the C price close below. But this liquidity grab doesn't require it doesn't require a liquidity, it doesn't require a closing, right? It doesn't need to close. It can just be a long week. It can just be a very sharp push. As long as price pushed above that liquidity spot, then we can classify that as what? A takeout of liquidity. All right, so I'm having, you know, I'm having a little cut off. All right, so let's take off all this. So that is it. Now, let us identify just maybe just one example if I can see anyone. Maybe just one example of a protected high or low. All right, this is one example here. So this is it. I see this. What do you see here? See price, take a liquidity, right? I told you guys that for the liquidity grab, it doesn't need to close above. It's not necessary, right? Whether it's close or it doesn't, it doesn't, mind. It doesn't mean anything, right? Number one, we established the market is bearish because the market was, dump, was you know, dumping from here. All right, so market was kind of bearish from this point. See, market making new lows, you know, see price and doing all of those funds, all right? And then we had price hit this PUI here. Right? I can see how price hit this PUI there. Now, what happened next? See what happened. See, price creates an inducement here. Don't want to talk about all that. So, what happened next? I can see how price closed. And where is the low we are looking at? This is the low, right? This is the low. So, this is the low we are looking at, right? That's low. So you can see how price closed below it, right? So number one, you see how price took a liquidity. You can see how price was has closed below it, right? So the same price closed below the low to confirm your make of a new low, right? So let us, you can also use your line chart to confirm it. So you can see how price closed below it here, right? So you can use line chart to confirm if price has closed below. So if you're not really sure from the candles, you can just switch to a line chart to confirm if price has actually closed below. You can see how price closed below that's no year, right? So we're around there. Price close below it, and that's in dropping up assets. So this is an example of what you call a protected high and low, right? Very simple example of it. All right. So let's now look at what you call the break of structure. Now, someone someone might be asking me, since you have explained bullish and bearish markets, will price be bullish forever? Right? Will price be bullish forever? Right? So how do we know that? the market has changed because some are asking me sir i'm looking at this market now i'm seeing that this market was bullish from here so now what's changed and i became bearish what is the cause of this bearishness why was the market going down down here and then it said it suddenly started going up and then now it's not going down what is causing this movement up and down why is it not moving in one direction right so the the, the explanation to that is this right it's also called break of market structure or what you call change of character right so let's talk about change of character right change of character right so a change of character or boss refers or let's use the right word a change of character is when the market changes from being bullish to being bearish right so that is what happens when the market changes from being bullish to bearish right we call it a change of character right the market is, has changed its character it has changed its trend Right, so we're supposed to call it as what change of character. All right, some of you are asking me now, okay, so what is the difference between a change of character and a break of structure? So, what is the difference between a change of character and a break of structure? Now, the difference is this for a break of structure, price doesn't need to change the trend, right? So, there's no need for price to change the trend, right? 
although people although people use these terms interchangeably so people use this these terms interchangeably right so we actually use it as you know it does it depends on how you are trained but for me, I don't see them as the same. So people use ch change of character as BOS and BOS as change of character. And that is not bad, right? So you're still correct. So people even say BMS, which is what's breaking market structure, right? So people also say BMS, right? So people say BMS, they say it's breaking market structure. So people also say SMS, which so, is uh, shift in market structure. So we call it SMS, shift in market structure, right? So, um, yeah. So, yeah. Now I want to drop a nugget here because I know some of you are watching this video and you might want to win my giveaway, right? So my giveaway is you're simply going to explain who uh, just simply don't don't just just simply type the mean of BMS and SMS. I say that BMS means break a market structure, SMS means shift in market structure. So I want you guys to just type it in the comment section. I will pick winners from the comment section. Right. So after this video is done, not now. Once the video is done, like once we finish this training, just type the meaning of SMS and BOS. I mean, and, B, and you know, and you know, um, BMS. And of course, you don't have to be the first. Like some people want to type it now. Don't type it now. Wait for the video to be done. Then you draw, go to the comment section and type the meaning of BMS and SMS, the full meaning. And of course, it, it is not a matter of who types first. Right, just take your time to type it because I will randomly choose who to win the giveaway. So it's not whether you, you came early or you came late, it doesn't matter, right? It's not a matter of who came early, who came late, um, who typed first. No, I'm going to do it randomly. Right? I will pick a few people to give them some cash prizes. So I want you guys to pick um pick BMS, the meaning, SMS, the meaning, and also tell me the difference between BOS and change of character, right? Type the meaning of B the I, I just explained the difference that. In change of character, you want to see the trend change, but in BOS, there's no need for a change of trend, right? So those three things: number one, the, the, the meaning of BMS; number two, the, the meaning of SMS; and number three, difference between change of character and BOS. That is what you use to enter for the giveaway, right? The giveaway is sponsored by Ten Trade. So if you have not made it, you have not, you know, created a Ten Trade account, just use my link. To create one before we continue right so remember it should be done after the class not now if you type it now you're disqualified type it after the class you come to the comment section and then drop it there don't type it now this class is on all right so that is it so let us explain the difference between bos and sms i mean bos and um so now when the market is bullish right what do we see here? market is bullish we see what price make a new high Price make a new high, price make a new high. You know, take a liquidity and then make a new high. Right. So now, what is the what is the BUS? BUS is what? This is BUS. 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 So once price makes a new high, we call it a BUS, right? Break or structure because the structure has been broken to the upside. Structure has been broken to the upside, so that's what we call that's what we refer to as a break of structure. Once price just break, make a new high low. So when price makes a new high or a new low, we call it a break of structure. But now in the in the case of change of character, that is when the market changes from being bullish to bearish, of course. So if we're in a bullish market now, right, that market is bullish, right, and then we make a protected high here, and then price comes and close below this. Right now, notice this. This was the effect as a change of character. What do I mean? Watch this. Watch this. Pay attention. So, this is your. Remember what I told you guys earlier that a protected low is a low that takes liquidity and makes a new high. So, now, whenever price closes below a protected low, we refer to that scenario as what a change of character. So, a change of character occurs when price goes below this protected low. So once price closes above below this protected low, we have seen what a change of character, right? So that is the difference. So for a, for a change of character, price needs to go below your protected low, right? That is a bearish change of character. Price goes has to close below your protected low. Why, for a bullish example, <coughs> price has to go below your protected high. Right <clears throat> now, let me just put an exception here. So now there's a little exception here. 
the little exception is this. If price mitigates an area of you know, an area of supply or demand in brackets and other block, right? So if price mitigates this, then not I'm giving you guys an example, just these are very, very strong rules. So now if price mitigates an area of supply or demand, which is or all an order block, then the recent low can serve as change of character, right? So now what do I mean? Remember, I told you guys that for a change of character to be valid, price has to, has to close below your protected low. But in an instance where price taps into an order block, right? In an instance where price taps into an order block, price doesn't need to go below the protected low. Any low at all can serve. That means if there's another block here and price just goes below it, it this is a chain of character. Why? Because price tapped into an area of what supply or demand, right? So the only time in which you do not list this, 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 this is our protected low now, right? This is local liquidity. I made the So this is our protected low now, but price has not closed below it. Instead, price tapped into an other block, which is bearish. And then you see price go below this low. So now this can serve as what? A bearish change of character, right? So change of character, you have to pay attention to where price is coming from. If price hits an other block, then you can use your recent low as a change of character. But if there is no other block here, if there is no other block here, nothing is there, what do you do? You wait for price to come below what? This um, protected low, right? That means even if price goes below this, this is not the change of character. It's until price goes below this one because this is your protected low, right? That is just the difference. So you have to pay attention to where price is coming from. If price is coming from either demand or supply or an order block, then you can use the recent low. But if there's no other block, then you have to wait for price to come towards your uh, protected high or low. And this is the case for a bearish example. So if you are bearish now, if we are bearish and you know price does the same thing that means price if we are bearish now and price you know makes does this right and then it taps into a, let's say that we had our, our protected high here right and then price you know hits at a bullish order block right maybe there's a bullish order block here something like a bullish order block here right and then price taps into it now we can use the recent high as a change of character. That means if price goes above this recent high, that is a change of character. But if there's no other block here, price needs to go what above your protected high. This one, this is a protected high. This one, why? Because there is liquidity grab before it. So this is a protected high, right? So this is a protected high now. So until price goes above this one, it's not in your quarter because there's no other block or supply zone or demand zone down there. But in cases where there's a supply or demand zone, then we use what? This recent high. So that is what you should pay attention to. So whenever you're looking at the market, always ask yourself, has the market hit a protected high? Has price hit an other block or area of demand or supply? What do we do about that? Right? So this is very, very important that you take note of this. Right, it's very very important that you take note of this. So if you're, uh, if you have gotten that point, do have to type it in the. In fact, this video, I feel that you need you might need to watch this video two times because the things I've said here, I don't believe that you have gotten it at just one sitting. I feel that you should be using your writing pen, writing material to take note of this as I just said now because it's going to serve you in the long run. All right, so let's look at. Some examples. I want to use examples a lot this time around, so you guys can, you know, get the Fuji. So I'll go to the fifteen minutes time frame. All right. So my God. Okay. So I use this today. So let us just take up with the drawings. All right. So what do we see here? Well, let's start from here. Mm-hmm. So what do we see here? So now market was bullish. 
So my guy was giving us bullish markets. Um, if you look very carefully, we have a bullish order flow here. So we had kind of bullish demand zone here. This is kind of demand. This last push down. You can see how after price pushed down here, you can see this impulsive move to the upside, right? So now what do we see there? If you look very carefully here, you can see that price came there. I can see how price, you know, took out the most recent high. So this is the most recent high. So look at this. If you're judging this structure, I will say, okay, this is the market structure. You see this, we see the high, and then we see the low, right? So what the price do here? You can see how price tapped into that our area of that area of demand, and you can see how market changed to become bullish, right? So now this is what we may felt that was a change of character because price was in, in an area of you know this demand area so this last push down before they push up it's also called the demand area right so we can see how price tapped into that and what happened you can see the market give that bullish break and what happened next the market bought towards to make a new high right so now where is our next area of demand this is the last push down i can see last push down as well right I say this is our last area of demand. I can see our price. In this case, price came back here again. So you can see our price, you know, came back that area of demand. And then you can see our price pushed above. All right. So I've made a new high. All right. So if maybe on the lower time frame you saw an entry here, which I cannot really see, maybe you have caught this. But look at this. As price hit our area of demand, what happened there? We well, saw so what? Markets take out this structural high. That's what we call a change of character. So market changed from being bearish. This was market as market tapped here, it became bullish again. And then we can, if you maybe you cause the retest or something, you have caused this continuation buy, right? So you can see how this area of demands function. Once price tap into them, you wait for market to give us a change of what character, right? Now what I will teach you guys how to refine it because some of the, some of the wondering how will I use this whole big area. Right, don't worry, I'll teach you guys how to refine as we continue. This is just to point out how price, you know, books, right? So now, where did the market change to become bearish? Where did it change to become bearish? So what the God of we have here, we have this, uh, this, this did not close up, okay, close up book. So what do we have here? We saw the market continue being bullish, right? We saw the market continue being bullish. You saw this, this was our last push down. This was the last push down. You can see how price, you know, came back there, and then bots continued its bullish movement, right? Um, this as well. If you ask me, this is our last push down. This is our last push down, right? This is our area of demand, right? You can see how price came back, tapped into the area of demand, and then continued being bullish, right? And if you check very carefully, here, there was a change of character here. Well, so if you if you classify structure, we'll say okay. Markets came here. Mm -hmm. How can you see? I see this bullish break here, right? Markets came with the tested and then was went above. So you can see how this market just tapped into our area of demand and then continue resuming is what is bullish movement. So whenever you're you're bullish, you want price to come to your area of demand and give you what that uh, change of character to continue taking price to the upside, right? So you can see that. So whenever price is retracing, also Pay attention to this. Whenever price is retracing, it looks bearish. Whenever price is you know retracing to come to higher low, it looks as if it's bearish until it hits your area of demand and then what gives you what that bullish continuation movement, right? So look at this example here. I've not really seen a change of character. Um, yeah, so that is it. So this is for a bullish example, right? You can see how price has been um, you know pushing to the upside, right? Can say price push so look at this look at this example as well. Um, this area has already been tapping. So I think this was this was our last push down here, which was not tapping. So look at our last I'll see from here. Last push down was here. This is our area of demand. You can see our price tapping to it. What happened? Can you see the change of character here? Market went above this high. Change of character. You see price that you can see our price tap back and then was market close above the high. That is chino karata and the customer gets you know struggle before they want to drop to the downside right so that is basically it so whenever price comes to order we always wait for that chain of karata to ascertain that the market is ready to move in your direction right don't enter trades without chain of karata because 
they change the characteristic confirmation that price is about to move in your direction, right? So always wait for the market to give you a change of character, right? So that's, that's important. It helps to know when the market is about to move in your direction. Then you can combine it with other blocks, right? But in the cases where there's no other block, you wait for the market to take out towards a protected high, right? So I wish I would see an example on that. Let me just see if I can see an example of this, what I'm talking about now. I wish I could, I could see an example of this. If I can't see an example of this, this down, I will show you guys in tomorrow's training, right? If I cannot see an example, so I won't waste too much of my time. It's, already, it's almost 30 minutes into this call. So maybe tomorrow I will look for an example where there was, there was no other block and then price, you know, took out the protected high and then changed character, right? So that's what I'm going to do in the next training, right? So I think that that's actually all for today. We're already 30 minutes, almost 30 minutes into, into the call. So if you learned something, do well to drop a comment, like, subscribe. And of course, um, tomorrow's training will be continuing with this market structure series, right? So don't forget to do the assignment I told you guys. Remember BMS, SMS, and the difference between BUS and change of character, right? And yeah, just type, just type it in the YouTube comment section after this class, right? So see you guys in tomorrow's training. Have a wonderful day. Um, See you guys when I see you guys. Cheers and God bless.